episode number 1033. Art and Creativity for Healing has helped tens of thousands of children and adults process stress, illness, grief, and fear. Whether it be in hospitals or in nonprofit community organizations, Art and Creativity for Healing gives pain a voice and meaning through expressive abstract art and healing. Founder and director Lori Zagon joins us today to tell us more about how art has also helped stressed out business leaders. Lori, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Show. Thank you so much. I love being here. It's great to have you here. Let's get started simply. Can you share an interesting story from your career that helps to illuminate who you are and learn a little bit oh, more about so you? Oh, so many stories, but I can give you a recent one. We have been specializing in helping businesses bring some of their executives or staff to workshops, which are team building workshops, so art for renewal and stress management. And most recently, we had the team from In N Out Burger, and they all came in and they were all apprehensive about doing art. And they sat down, and just in a few minutes, they began to enjoy themselves. And actually, when they were leaving, they said this was like the best thing they've done in such a long time. Interesting. And, and then they also put all their paintings in their office spaces. And so I heard that from one of them. Uh -huh. Wherever you go in their offices, you'll see some of their Art for Healing paintings. So, so that's very interesting. And in and out is obviously an iconic Southern California brand. Um, what is it specifically that you're doing for these companies through this workshop? Well, in essence, I train people or teach people how to use color as a language. And so being a former university professor of art from New York for 15 years and then coming out to California and doing this work, I began you know, with that history of being an art teacher and saw that there was something more I wanted to do with people in a more soulful approach, which was to have them speak this language without having to worry about knowing how to draw. Mm. And so I wanted to take away that apprehension that people have that, oh, I have no talent, I'm not good at this, my brother was the artist in the family, those kinds of things. Right. And instead, um, I bring them in and I say, we're going to work abstractly. We're working with Q-tips and sponges, no brushes. Okay. Those are the brushes. And a palette of acrylic paints. And they come in and we start them out by just asking them to express a color for a word. And they put a little abstract energy on a piece of white paper. And they look at it and they go, whoa, that was fun. Okay. And then from there, we build upon the workshop by asking them questions about their life and having them answer with colors so that if I have seven questions about their life, like express something that might be bothering you today mm -hmm. with two colors, and but no pictures, no words, just colors, they begin to build the feeling of what that is versus what it looks like. Okay. And do they then explain what's on their palette to the other leaders, or how does that work? Well, when they we ask them, if you'd like to share about your work, we would love to hear it, but otherwise it's private, so okay. you can keep it to yourself. I would but imagine some would. And many of them raise their hand and say, I'd like to talk about After this. After the first brave one. Yeah, right? exactly. Takes it's like the, the little kids in school that go, ooh, ooh, pick me. Right. It's kind of like that with the adults, too. And they talk about how they didn't realize that what was bothering them was something going on you know in the office or it's going on somewhere else nearby whatever their specific situation is we build on that by asking them questions about the ideal job for them mm. um, asking them questions about um, a disappointment or loss or something that happened in their job that might have uh, led them to be disappointed with the job or when they receive recognition or praise, what are the colors of recognition and praise okay. versus disappointment? And so they build this, and then they talk about it. And one of my uh, CEOs that came, Zumasis Corporation, which is um, listed in Orange County Business Journal as one of Orange County's best places to work. Sure I they are. read that. And the CEO came, and he did a painting, and he was really not into it at first. And then he said that he began to do it, and he started to think about a friend of his in Italy, and some colors came up that actually reminded him of time that he had spent with this friend of his. And afterwards, he was so excited about the painting that he had it sent to him. Oh, my God. So that was really yeah. powerful. And right. since then, he sent 
staff to us um, once a year at least having them do one of our art for renewal and stress management workshops. So that's great in the corporate setting, but I also know, as I said here in the open, that you've worked with nonprofit community organizations as well as hospitals, and you're giving pain a voice. So tell me a little bit more about your organization Absolutely. kind of in a broader scope. So. The, the purpose of the organization is to really work with people that need emotional healing and a support way of dealing with emotional healing. So we allow people to express themselves with pain on canvas to do that. And one way that that happens, it's like a catharsis of feelings that come from the inside of a person and, they, and it splashes out on canvas. Mm. And it's a way to separate it from the inside to the outside. Okay. It's very powerful. We're not psychologists, so we don't analyze anybody's work. But the participants will report that. So, for instance, we work with so many different agencies. We're right now, we've worked with 75,000 children and adults since we started in wow. the year 2000. Congratulations. And thank you. And we have um, seven um, agencies that are homeless agencies that we work with. Hmm. We work with children, adults, and families. They're all throughout Orange County, L.A., and San Diego. Our, one of our biggest programs is our Wounded Warrior program on Camp Pendleton. We've been doing that for nine years where we go in and we work with some rough and tough men and women. Right. And we walk in and say, you're going to be painting today. And they look at us like uh, we have, you know, like something wrong with us. And they sit down and I promise you 10 minutes. They are five-year-olds painting. And they come back if they're in town and they haven't been deployed. They uh -huh. come back. And... So nine years of this, we've had just a great experience, and all of them, many of them, um, have come back to us um, on emails or just comments in different places saying how much it helped them. Some have become mm. artists, actually, as wow. well, which is amazing. Wow. Help them how? By teaching them the language of color and painting on canvas in an abstract way so that, for instance, with a Marine who'd been deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq, They've had a lot of horrible, horrendous things happen to them. So when I ask them to express something that's upsetting them or making them angry right now, and they choose, let's say, lots of black and red, and then they choose to share that later, and it's abstract, but often they'll say, this is about when I saw my buddies mm. blown up in Afghanistan, that type of thing. So it gives the identity of the story on canvas and it helps them to move it from inside out. A lot of the therapists that work with them say that they are not able to talk. They don't want to talk and talk therapy, but they're willing right. to paint it. Wow. So it is a it is a tool to help them express themselves. Absolutely. Wow. And I, it's a miracle for me because when I look at it, I go, it's such a simple little thing. It's not that complicated. And anybody can do it. But the power of it is so great because when they see the canvas, uh -huh. their story is there and they know it's their story, even if no one else knows it. Right. But it's like, whoa, I don't want to look at that right now. It reminds me of what it was that came out. Okay. So, uh, Lori, how did you first, uh, how did this get started? Well, it's kind of happened with stressed out Wall Street executives in New York. Okay. So not only be, not only being a university professor teaching traditional painting, I began to explore with my students um, at the City University of New York, the ones that really weren't art majors that wanted to have fun painting felt intimidated by all the great artists and people were getting graded on how good they were versus how much work they did or you know whether they were able to accomplish the assignments. So I decided to invent some different things that would help them to enjoy it more, a more soulful approach. Mm. For years, I had students writing me and saying, you took me through a different door than I would have in, in academic situations. Wow. And so that was always wonderful to hear. But with um, one day, I, I lived in a loft in New York on 22nd Street and 5th Avenue, and I had a lot of people coming to my studio to look at art, and one day a couple of Wall Street executives came to see me, and one was to purchase a painting, and we started chatting, and they asked me about my teaching, and at that point, one of them said, well, we would love to take a class with you, and I said, but you are in Wall Street, and I'm on the way other end of town, and they said, you know, well, why can't we just get you to rent a, a hotel space 
and uh, you know cr and have us come and do it there like in a conference room uh -huh. and i said i i think i can probably do that and so ultimately what happened was they came and they marched in like penguins in Armani suits, one after another. There were nine men and one woman. Wow. And they sat down and they were very mad at me because it was late and they wanted to go to sleep because they had to get up at four o'clock in the morning sure. for Wall Street. And in 20 minutes, it was the first time I really saw this as really being beneficial in such a different way. 20 minutes, they began to be five-year-olds painting. Mm. And the guy who was a VP of Goldman Sachs called me over and said, where's the painting that you said was so good? And I said, oh, it's drying over there. And he said, well, don't let anything happen to it because I got to get it to the framer tomorrow. <laughs> he was getting it framed. Jeez. And that was the beginning of them telling all their friends, okay. all their business friends about me. And so that drove other business people yep. to come to your, wow, yep. interesting story. We're going to take our first and only stop here on Critical Mass Radio Show. Lori, when we come back, can, can we talk about a current challenge that's facing your organization? Absolutely. Okay, so you don't want to go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, because as you know, these breaks are very short for those loyal listeners. It's just one quick message about something that I do in the business, Critical Mass for Business. So stay around. We're going to be back with Lori Zagonch, who is the founder and director of Art and Creativity for Healing, after this word from me. Franzi, all of our shows can be heard anytime on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, several hundred former guest websites whose CEOs have appeared on our show and placed the player somewhere on their website. You know, since we started broadcasting the show in 2009, we've reached several thousand listeners through our live stream, podcast, and the other channels and platforms that we use. Simply type in these four words, Critical Mass Radio Show, in your favorite podcasting software to start receiving our weekly shows with amazing and interesting guests like Lori Zagon. She's the founder and director of Art and Creativity for Healing. Right before the break, Lori, I said if you could share a current challenge facing your nonprofit, I would appreciate if you could do that. Yes. As a nonprofit, the biggest challenge for us is fulfilling the need in the community. We do our workshops for the homeless shelters and for the military and for domestic violence shelters, all these different groups for free. We do not get paid. Okay. And so we have to raise money every year to do that. And so the demand for it, I mean, we're now in L.A. and, we're, and further in San Diego. Shelters hear about us. Can we get this? We're, like one is up in Santa Fe Springs, and they are um, women coming out of prison and men coming out of prison. And... The women were taking a workshop with us, and the men got jealous and asked if they could have one, too. Okay. So I think the biggest challenge is that we're getting so many calls, such demand, because our workshops are so unique. We're the only ones in the, com in the country that have a training program to teach people what I do, and it's called the Art for Healing Certificate Program through Brandman University. Okay. Uh, and we train people to facilitate so they can do this in, in any of their offices or any of their particular area of expertise. In the summers, we do a seven-day intensive twice to accommodate the people from out of state. Wow. And now we're about ready to develop an international certificate program because we've been getting so many calls from New Zealand and Japan and different places that want to be taught the techniques, so we're developing another program but the challenge is always going to be that everybody wants us but we can't give ourselves to everyone right and the fundraising is always a challenge okay and we once a year we do um, what's called palette of colors our annual gala and we raise money for our free programs that way every year we give away 1200 healing art boxes in fact wells fargo staff are coming to on thursday to help us load these boxes to give away these shoe boxes to the kids in Orange County. Uh -huh. So we get a lot of companies that help us. So anybody out there that has a company wants to help us, we'll take it. But also having um, the challenge of being able to um, get enough volunteers. Mm -hmm. And luckily, people seem to want to volunteer for us. So lately, it's been very helpful because we also have been at the, fes the Festival of Children here across the street. Sure. And so we've had people doing that for us. But I think all in all, um, I love doing this work so much, 
but I've had to learn how to have both left brain and right brain functioning mm. well, which is I have to learn to fundraise. And I had 18 years now, I've learned a little bit about fundraising. Right. But when we ask money for money from people, it's sometimes just 20 bucks for a healing art box for a kid in Compton. Mm -hmm. And so if um, you know people want to do that, they can also go to our website and check it out. Okay. It, it, it's um, always a challenge because the demand definitely outstrips your means, right? And we're going to talk about your website and how people could get involved in your organization right at the end of the show. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. In about four minutes, we'll be getting out that information. Um, but before we got there, I, I have to come back to, so it's universal because now you're training people around the world. So this isn't just like a Western culture kind of a thing. So, so in all the years that you've done this and the professional studies that you've done that predates this, what is it about this, what appears to be a simple act of putting color onto a, pa onto a canvas that is so cathartic for people? It brings them back to a time of childhood when it, there, were, there was no inhibitions about art. It, you know, you'd pick the crayons or you'd pick the paint and you'd just splash it on a canvas or a piece of paper. It brings them back to that pureness of childhood. And it also gives them a chance to, ha when they have no words for something, express the pain. So if there is pain, so, like we had a lot of people that are grieving. And so the grief is translated into colors. And it's a way to take it from inside out and put right. it on canvas. Right. Uh, but it's cathartic. It's very cathartic because it is like breathing out you know it's like breathing exhaling. out the colors exhaling yes and exhaling the colors and breathing in and exhaling the colors is a very powerful thing that happens right because it in one hand i agree i understand i can see how that um makes sense that they go back to a simpler time in their life but what they're doing with that is releasing something that's a very complex emotion yes so and sometimes they don't realize that that's what's happening okay and they'll say Oh my God, that happened 20 years ago. I can't believe that I put colors down for that. You know. So um, they're still like holding on to they're it. They're holding on to stuff. And again, I'm not a psychologist, so right. we don't analyze people's work, which is why it's more expressive art than right. it is art therapy. But at the same time, they're the ones that create their own healing space for themselves by talking about it. So it's, it is the power of self healing then. Yes, definitely the power of self healing. So people must be willing to be vulnerable. Yes. To gain from this process yes. right you, you, you told stories about you know maybe they come in in a certain way but quickly they might warm up to it but th you have to be willing to allow your inner feelings to come out and to be put onto the palette right and there's different curriculums so when I work with businesses we are not asking them to give pain a voice okay we're asking them to just express different situations in their life that are generic about their job for instance so they're putting colors to attach you know a disappointment in your job or a time when you've received recognition or praise. That's a different way of doing this work. But when we're out in the community working with the vulnerable populations yes. of people, they're going deep and Got they it. choose to go deep. Right, and they need to go deep. They do. Right? So I think so. Yeah, it sounds like it too from the way that 75,000 people have responded. And therapists have told me that when they bring their paintings to the therapist's office afterwards, oh my goodness. they have the most extraordinary time because sometimes they haven't been able to reach people, but yeah. once they paint it, the story has broken wow. through. You really have. This is awesome. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so th there's got to be people out there that are listening to us live on octalkradio.net or maybe on our Facebook feed here watching the video, Lori and I or hopefully of listening to it on a podcast that want to learn more about your organization. What's the best way for them to find out more about your organization, Lori? We have a comprehensive website, www.art4healing.org. you got to do that again. www.art4healing.org, and it's the number four, the numeral Perfect. four. And everything is on there that you would need to know. We also have 21 classes online that pe people can take on their own from their own bedroom if they want to paint in their own house. And right. And then we also have the schedule of classes on weekends that we do for people that want to come to our studio in Laguna Hills. And then we have all sorts of information. We have a brand new article, a white paper that we did on art in the brain mm. talking about that relationship. And so lots of information, and I hope people will contact us because we love talking to everybody. Well, I think 
Uh, I'd like to thank Barbara Kimmler for bringing you to the show's attention. She's a great friend of the program. He's delivered us fantastic guests, you being thank yet you. another one. And um, on behalf of the radio show and the community, thank you for doing what you're doing. Oh, my pleasure. I, fully, I, I, had, I didn't fully realize how much of an impact you're having until today on the show, but thank you for the work that you've wow. been doing for these many years. Nice. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being a friend of the program and a part of our community, too. My pleasure. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast. I'd also like to thank our engineer for today, none other than Paul Roberts. Our producers are Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, Twitter is CEO Peer Groups, CEO Peer Groups. On LinkedIn and YouTube, I'm Richard Franzi. My Facebook page and my website are very simple, Critical Mass 4, spelled out F-O-R, business.com. And until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.